Hello everyone and welcome back to Motion Recaps. In today's video we will narrate an episode of a TV show called Black Mirror with the name Black Museum. Watch out for spoilers. A woman named Nish is singing while driving through the scorched landscape. Her car runs out of battery power, and she stops at a gas station to recharge it. She has three hours of spare time until the battery fully charges. While she's waiting, Nish meanders over to the nearby structure, the Black Museum. The sign on the outside indicates tours won't begin until 11. At last, Nish is led inside by the owner of the museum, an American man named Rollo Haynes. The museum's decor is kind of like a freak show meets vampire lair. Rollo says more people will be coming for the tour, but we know that's not true because the highway is empty. Rollo warns her that AC is broken, but Nish wants to kill time anyway. Rollo runs Nish through a checkup, and she starts asking questions about her. She tells him that she is from Britain, it's her father's birthday soon, and he lives nearby, so she came to visit him. He then explains to her that this is his museum of crime and that he started working here after he lost his job at a technology company. Nish is curiously walking around, and we can see a few references from later episodes. There is a costume from the White Bear episode and Delia's cloning device from us Callister. One of the artifacts catches Nish's attention, it's some kind of brain net thing and Rollo explains to her that it's called Dawson's Sympathetic Diagnoser and that he was working with it back in the days when he was in medical technology. Rollo explains that his company gave free insurance to their clients, but clients needed to take part in testing out the company's products, typical shady things that go wrong sometimes. Rollo needed a recruit to try out his department's newest invention, and then he chose Dr. Dawson. He called Dawson for a meeting in Four Eyes, and then he showed him an interesting device. Rollo explains to Dawson that the device is some kind of brain transmitter. Rollo then explains that one person needs to have a transmitter, while the other one needs to have a receiver. That way, the brains would connect. They tried a device on two rats, and the result was that rats shared physical sensations. When one got burned, the other one felt the pain, but he didn't receive any physical damage. Rollo then tells Dawson that he can use this device to help other people if he plants a receiver in him. If a patient comes in and he is unable to explain what's wrong with him, Dawson can put a transmitter on him, and he can feel what the patient is feeling. That way, he will figure out what's wrong immediately. Dawson is blown away by the device, and he gets the receiver planted in his brain immediately. Rollo puts a transmitter on Dawson's wife, and when he stabs her in the palm, Dawson feels that too. After that, Dawson used a device frequently to help other people. He could feel their pain, but without any damage to his body. Then, he would create a catalog of what every single kind of illness feels like. This is appendicitis. This is melanoma. He'd feel the precise pain, without any of the repercussions. However, Dawson brought it on a whole new level. He used the device on his wife while they were having sex, and that way, he could feel her physical sensations during it and have an orgasm too. He was feeling the ultimate sensation. To his surprise, everything changed when he tried to use the device on one patient. Dawson couldn't figure out what was wrong with the patient. The patient died, and Dawson died with him. However, unlike his patient, Dawson came back from the grim paws of death. Everything got weirder when Dawson figured out that he felt a sensation instead of pain. While he was connected to his patients, he felt like he was having sex because the pain felt so good to him. Dawson brought his new thing to his bed. He made his wife wear a transmitter while they were having sex, and he spanked her hard with a bondage paddle. He wasn't hitting her in a kinky way, instead, he was hitting her like crazy. His wife told him to stop with that, and she refused to be tortured while having sex with him. The next day, Dawson came to work but on an earlier shift. Everyone was confused to see him there, but he came to feel sensation over the patient's pain. He would sneak up on them, and he would put the device on them. Then he would feel a sexual sensation. He acted like a leech, and because of his behavior, he was fired. Dawson was sitting numb and depressed at his home when he accidentally broke a glass in his hand and felt a marvelous sensation. 
then he got an idea. In the bathroom, he took a razor and a drill. He was a doctor, and he knew how to cut and drill himself without bleeding out. He even took out his teeth one by one. He felt the purest sensation, but it wasn't enough for him. He took his torturing tools, and he got out of his house. He found a perfect victim, a homeless man on the streets, and he tortured him with a drill. He felt a huge wave of sensation while the man was screaming and begged him to stop. The police heard the poor man's screams. However, it was too late for him. The man was dead, and Dawson passed out. Rolo starts to feel unwell because of the heat, so Nish gives him her water, and he drinks all of it. Then he continues giving a tour to Nish, and he approaches a stuffed monkey toy and tells Nish that the next story will be interesting to her. At a Halloween party, a woman named Carrie met a man named Jack. They fall in love, and they have sex immediately. Carrie gets pregnant, and she gives birth to a boy named Parker. They were a perfect image of a happy family. They were walking through the park, and Carrie wanted to take a picture of Jack and Parker. She was walking away to get a perfect angle when a truck came out of nowhere, and it hit her. She was in a coma, and Jack was devastated. Several years have passed, and Jack visited Carrie every week, and he talked with her about his life and their son. Soon, he got her a basic device that allowed her to respond with yes and no. Then Rollo showed up. He tells Jack that he is working for a technology company, and that he has a way to transfer her consciousness into his brain. He explains to Jack that Carrie will be like a passenger in his brain, she will see what Jack sees, she will hear what Jack hears, and she will feel what he feels. Rolo tells Jack that Carrie will be able to hug Parker through him. Rolo then asks Carrie if she wants that, and she responds positively. Jack agrees too. Rolo then proceeds to transport Carrie's consciousness to Jack's brain. Suddenly, Carrie wakes up, and she is sitting on a chair. Rolo runs a few tests with an apple, and Carrie can see it, feel it, and taste it through Jack. And both of them are happy because they are together once again. Carrie can hug her son after so much time. Everyone was happy, but as always, there was a catch, and their happiness didn't last for long. Soon, Carrie began to feel frustrated because she didn't have any control. After that, she started to have arguments on a daily basis with Jack, and he was frustrated with her telling him what to do 24-7. Eventually, they visited Rolo to ask him for help. Rolo tells Jack that he can have remote control over Carrie and that he can put her on pause whenever he wants to, and that he can unpause her here when he wants her to see Parker. It was like some weird divorce thing. After that, Jack gets into an elevator, and when a woman comes in, he starts checking her out. Carrie judges him, but he says that he is horny because he didn't have a chance to touch himself because of Carrie for months. He just couldn't do it while Carrie was inside his brain. It was too awkward for him. Carrie starts arguing with him, and Jack loses it. He puts her on pause without a second thought. Everything goes black for Carrie. The first thing she sees is Jack in the mirror. Halloween decorations are all around him and Carrie figures out how long she paused. Jack apologizes to her, and he says that he bought a muffin for her because it's Halloween and it's like their anniversary. She is enraged, but she forgets about it when she sees Parker. After that, Jack meets his neighbor, Emily, and Carrie is visibly jealous. She already knows that Jack will hook up with her, but she is powerless. She starts to argue with him again, and he decides to pause her again. After some time passes, Jack and Emily start to live together, and Parker accepts Emily pretty well, however, Carrie can't stand her. Emily is not much better, but somehow everyone manages to get things working well. Emily, Jack, and Carrie pay a visit to Rolo. Jack doesn't want to delete Carrie's consciousness. Rolo gives him the advice to transfer her mind into a stuffed toy, and then they will give it to Parker. Jack agrees, and Carrie's mind is transported. She wakes up when Parker gets a monkey toy from the box. Carrie figures out that she isn't in Jack's body anymore. She can only communicate with two phrases. One is monkey loves you, which means yes, and the other one is monkey needs a hug, which means no. When Carrie realized her ability to communicate was so limited, she freaked out. She started pressing both of the buttons rapidly. Emily pinned the monkey to the wall and told Carrie to quit it. Poor Carrie. Parker liked this monkey for a while, but not for long enough. After a while, the monkey was discarded, and Carrie was trapped there forever. Rollo explains to Nish that deleting Carrie's continues was illegal because it would technically be murder, and she is now trapped in this toy for eternity. Nish takes a monkey toy, and the monkey says, monkey needs a hug. Rollo explains to Nish that he lost his job at the company because of that case. 
Rolo brings her to the next exhibition. Both of them are slowly walking towards the red curtains. Rolo removes them, and Nish sees a Rolo gram of a man sitting in a prison cell. There is a visible shock on her face. Rolo tells her that the man's name is Clayton. Back in the day, he murdered a weather report girl, and this Rolo Graham is his consciousness. Clayton's consciousness can walk around a glass cell in which he is trapped. Rolo then tells a story about how he found Clayton and how he trapped him in this glass box, in which he will be stuck forever. Clayton was innocent, but no one believed him, and an electric chair was waiting for him. Rolo came to visit him. He introduces himself as a guy who works for technology. Rolo had different plans for Clayton. He gave him a proposal. If Clayton gets sent to the electric chair, Rolo will extract his consciousness on one chip. Clayton refuses immediately, but Rolo tells him that he will pay nicely to Clayton's family. Clayton agrees. Later, he tells that to his wife Angelica, but she doesn't like that idea, and she tells Clayton that Rolo will trap his soul. But Clayton doesn't listen to her, and he says that he wants to help his family. Soon, the execution day came. Before execution, Rolo puts a device on Clayton that will download his consciousness. They execute him, and Rolo takes the device with him back to the Black Museum. He just opened it, and he needed something really special for new visitors. He uploaded Clayton's consciousness into the cell. Clayton could see, feel, hear everything. He was fully conscious and aware. However, he didn't have any idea about Rolo's evil plans. He made an exhibition out of Clayton where visitors could execute him. Visitors were really into torturing and killing Clayton. They were enjoying every note of Clayton's desperate screams. He even made little holographic amulets with Clayton's face full of agony on them. And then he was selling those amulets as souvenirs. However, as time passed, visitors lost interest in Rolo's grotesque exhibition. Only a few of them were still enjoying it, mostly perverts who got sexually aroused while watching people in great pain. Rolo finishes his story, and Nish is visibly shaken. Suddenly, Rolo starts to cough like crazy, and his face turns red, and soon he starts to choke. Nish tells him that he is a terrible person and that he is a monster. She reveals that she is Clayton's daughter. She gets closer to Clayton, and he barely recognizes her. Nish then tells Rolo that Clayton's wife, Angelica, was in the museum once. She saw her poor husband being executed over and over again, and she decided to take her life away. Rolo is powerless, and he tries to say something to Nish while he is battling for breath. Nish reveals that she poisoned him. She takes out the device that Rolo used on Carrie to transfer her consciousness into Jack's brain. Nish downloads Rolo's consciousness, and then she transfers it into Clayton's virtual mind. Rolo wakes up, and he sees Nish sitting with the monkey toy. He insults her and yells at her, but in vain, she cannot hear him. He is powerless now, and Nish is in charge of his fate. Nish then tells him that he will pay for all of the bad things he has done. And she electrocutes Clayton for the one last time, ending his misery and punishing Rolo by giving him eternal torture. As a souvenir, Nish gets an amulet with Rolo's face. She leaves the museum with Carrie. She gets a card out of AC, and we learn that she hacked it. Then she enters her car, and she puts Carrie down on a passenger seat. Suddenly, she starts to talk with her mother. We find out that her mother's consciousness is in her head and that she was there all along, watching and listening. The mother acknowledges Nish's good work. She is proud of her daughter. Nish drives away while the museum is burning to the background. And that's it for today's video. If you had a good time watching it, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more interesting movie recaps.